Hey everybody, Lucky Lucky to here and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be covering everything there is to know about Dolphin, from installation to setting up netplay, and by the end of this video you'll have everything you need, I hope. Also, I'm going to be leaving timestamps in the description and making chapters throughout the video for those who are interested in a specific topic. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and like to start. <laughs> First go to Google and search up Dolphin Emulator and click the download link, but I also left the link in the description. Next you're going to want to download the most recent beta version of Dolphin which at the time of this video it is 5.0-17995. Once you download the recent version, you're done, it's easy as that. Once you've downloaded Dolphin, it's time to set up the ROMs. Now I can't tell you exactly where to get them so you have to do a bit of research on your own. But once you have your ROMs, you want to extract them or open the file. I recommend using WinRAR or 7-Zip for this, I personally like to use WinRAR. After extracting or opening the file, you then want to look for a file inside it that either ends with WBFS, which is for Wii ROMs, or .nkit.iso, or just .nkit, which is for GameCube ROMs. Once you find the files, I would 100% recommend making a ROMs folder where you keep all your ROMs inside the folder. I also recommend having multiple subfolders for different systems like you guys see on screen. Next, drag and drop the Wii or GameCube ROM in its respective folder, and after that you want to head over to Dolphin and go to Config, Paths, Add, and then search for your ROMs and click on your Wii or GameCube folder. If you did everything right, you should see all your games on Dolphin, and to add the rest of your games do the exact same thing, but this time, click on the other folder whether it's GameCube or Wii you didn't do previously. Remember that Dolphin works with all GameCube, Wii, and WiiWare games. This includes all regions. Also, translation and ROM hacks work too, so Dolphin can play with anything that you throw at it. However, to play the Triforce arcade games, you need a customized version of Dolphin called Triforce Branch. Now that you've set up your ROMs, you may have noticed it's all organized as a list. Well, that could all change if you click on View at the top and then click on Grid View. Personally, not a big fan of this look, but we can make it look nicer. Once you have grid view selected, go to config and then interface. You then want to select download game covers, which is the third option. After selecting it, it may take a minute or two for all the game covers to download depending on how many games you've installed. You can also change the color of the interface which makes it look a bit nicer. Go to config, interface and then click on theme and then choose the color of your choice. But once it's finished, it should look something like this and in my opinion this is the cleanest look you can have on Dolphin. Dolphin supports any controller that is able to connect via Bluetooth, which means PlayStation, Xbox, a Switch Pro controller, and even an actual Wemo are all supported. Unless you're part of that 0.1% of people who use mouse and keyboard. Dolphin has tons of options for controls on GameCube games, which is awesome. You can even play with the steering wheel. Once you have the controller of your choice, depending on the game you're going to play, whether it's GameCube or Wii, I'd recommend searching up the game's controls. For example, if you're going to play a New Super Mario Bros. Wii, you should look up New Super Mario Bros. Wii controls, and I'd always recommend going to Strategy Wiki, because it has all the controls listed for the game you want to play. After that, you now just want to set the controls of your liking. Depending on how powerful your computer is will depend on the graphics settings you'll have, so I'm going to be going over my recommendations for low and high end PCs. If you have a low end PC, I'd recommend going to config first and enable dual core speed up. Next go to graphics and have your backend set to Direct3D 11 and set your adapter to your GPU. For the aspect ratio, have it as auto and for others select render to main window. In the shader compilation, have specialized default selected and check off the compiled shaders before starting. With this setting on, your game will take longer to load, but it'll be worth it so you don't run into many issues while playing. And I'd even recommend this setting to people with more powerful PCs. Now go to the Enhancements tab, and for the internal resolution, I'd say go with the lowest native resolution or go with 720p if you're comfortable enough. For anti-aliasing, choose 4x SSAA, but if that gives you problems, go with 4x MSAA, or just lower the resolution. For these boxes, just copy what you see on screen. Moving on to the hacks tab, you should be fine without having to change anything here, but just in case your game still lags or has issues, select the skip EFB axis from CPU and deselect fast depth calculation. On the advanced tab and miss, just select progressive scan and with that, your game should now run as smooth as butter. If you have a high end PC, in the general graphics tab, I'd recommend Direct3D 12, but if it gives you problems, you can go with 11 or something else. Set your adapter as your GPU, and the aspect ratio is a personal preference, but I have mine stretched to window. For the shader compilation, choose exclusive Uber shaders and also mark the compile shaders before starting box. Checking this off means your game will take longer to start, but the benefit is that you won't run into many issues while playing. 
Moving on to the enhancement tab, for internal resolution, I have my set as 1080p because my monitor is in a, you know, 1080p, but you can have the setting higher if you'd like. For anti-aliasing, have it as 4 times SSAA or 4 times MSAA, just choose whichever one will give you the least problems. An isotropic filtering set as 16 times, and for these boxes, just copy what you see on screen. Once you have these settings, you're done. You don't need to change anything in hacks or the advanced tab, so don't worry about it. Now your game will look amazing and run well. Imagine being able to make your character invisible, have infinite jumps, or even make Mario Kart 500cc. But with the use of Gecko and Action Replay codes, you can do just that. To enable them, go to the Configuration menu, select the General tab, and click the box, and check the box next to Enable Cheats. Once you've done that, exit the Configuration menu, right-click on the game you want to play, and select Properties. From there, go to the Gecko Code tab. Click on Download Codes to obtain them from the internet, or if you prefer, type in Add New Code to enter a cheat manually. For cheat codes, it's recommended to right-click on a game and select Wiki, where you'll be brought to that game's Dolphin Wiki page. This corresponding page contains everything that you'll need to know about the game, including how to enhance the game with widescreen and other visual-related codes. Texture packs are a great way to enhance the visual experience of your games on Dolphin. When I remastered Mario Kart Wii, I demonstrated how I implemented a customized texture pack to improve the game's graphics. Texture packs can be applied to both GameCube and Wii games. They work by replacing in-game textures with higher resolution versions, making the game look more detailed when upscaled. It's an easy way to give your favorite games a fresh new look, and I would highly recommend experimenting with them. Netplay is a feature in Dolphin that allows players to play games online with others. It's a great way to play your favorite games with friends, although it can be a hassle to set up. I'm going to be trying my best to make it as easy as possible. First of all, you and your friends are all going to need the same version of Dolphin and the same ROM files. So make sure to check the top left corner to see what version you all have for Dolphin and make sure you all download the same ROM. What's good everybody, it's your boy Lucky in the future. I woke up about like 20 minutes ago and that's exactly why I sound like this. Anyways, I'm recording this and you guys are hearing this because I told you guys some misleading and false information in the net play section of this video. So I apologize, but I'm going to be fixing my errors right now. So once you all have the same version of Dolphin installed and the same ROM file is downloaded, you're all set and good to go on that. So you now are all going to want to set up your controls. So now listen to me closely here. Everyone who's going to be playing is going to want to set themselves as Port 1 aka Player 1. It does not matter if it's a Wii or GameCube game, just set yourself as Player 1. You can be Player 2, set yourself as Player 1. So you can be Player 4, set yourself as Player 1, and etc. It does not matter. And yeah, that's all I had to say, um, so make sure you guys do that. And yeah, let's continue the audio. To do that, go to Tools, Start Net Play, and make sure your connection type is set as Traversal Server. Click on Host, and then select the game you guys are going to play. The host is going to need to give the other players the room ID, so copy that and send it to whoever you're going to be playing with. Now, if you're the one joining the lobby, make sure your connection type is also set as Traversal Server, and enter the room ID. Once everyone is in, assign the controller ports to each player, make sure that everyone gets the right controls. Once that's done, you and your friends can finally play in peace. The first thing you'll need to do is go into Dolphin, select Config, and then go to GameCube. Here you'll see the GBA settings, so make sure that the BIOS is in there. One quick Google search works, trust me. Exit the configuration menu and go into controller settings. Select port 1 on the GameCube controls and click on the drop down menu and select GBA integrated. And make sure that the controls are configured correctly. When you boot up a GameCube game, it will automatically boot up MGBA. Some games that are compatible include The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker, The Legend of Zelda Four Swords Adventure, Animal Crossing, and more. What's even cooler is that this also supports netplay, meaning you'll be able to play games like Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles and The Legend of Zelda Four Swords Adventure with friends. To set up netplay for these games, you and your friends are going to want to make controls and make sure you all have yourselves in port 1 and keep the other ports as none. Unlike setting up netplay for Wii and GameCube, you don't need each other's controls which makes this process so much easier. Once you all have your desired controls, make a lobby, it doesn't matter who's host. And once you're all in, click assign controller ports and assign you and your friends ports. Also check out the GBA port box for each person who is in the game, and just like that, you're now able to net play. I played some 4 Swords Adventure with my friends and it ran like clockwork, just make sure that everyone in the lobby has a stable connection. To access the Wii menu in the Dolphin emulator, you can load the Wii system menu version 4.3U from the tools menu. This will take some time to boot up, but once it's complete, 
you'll be able to access the emulated Wii menu. Note that if you want to use save data and settings from your actual Wii console, you'll need to import a NAND backup. To do this, go to Tools, Manage NAND, Import Boot Me NAND Backup, and select the bin, and select the NAND.bin file. To dump your Wii's NAND, you'll need to use Boot Me. Once the NAND is imported, select the Wii Menu version 4.3 in the Tools menu to launch the Wii Menu. Now you can access your Wii save file and settings within the emulator. You can also add WADs into Dolphin so they'll appear on the Wii Menu. To do so, go to the Tools, install WAD, and then choose the game you want to add. Adding channels to the Wii Menu in the Dolphin emulator can be done by either importing WADs directly into Dolphin, or by adding them into the virtual Wii's NAND. The latter option takes up virtual blocks and space, making it cluttered and harder to manage channels and games. It is recommended to import WADs directly into Dolphin for a more convenient and organized experience. Anton was kind enough to provide me with his NAND, and as you can see, this is his famous Wii on my Dolphin emulator. But aside from that, we can see his really cool channels. Nice. Anyways, I hope you guys really did enjoy today's video, and if you did, make sure to drop a like and consider subscribing to the channel for more content in the future. If you guys have any more questions, make sure to drop them down in the comments down below. I'll try my best to reply to every single one of them. Anyways, make sure to check out all my socials down in the description, including Anton's channel as well. Anyways, I hope you guys really did enjoy today's video. Hope you guys had a wonderful day, and like it too, out.